That spectacular spread of green that you see on golf courses or sports stadiums doesn't just happen. Like all agricultural crops, turf grass demands just the right growing conditions for a successful harvest. And like other crops, research is underway to improve grass. A perfectly manicured golf course. Perhaps the location where the most respect is paid to grass. But leave the course and look around. Weeds, dry spots, muddy messes. No respect. You quickly discover that turf grass is, well, something we don't think about very much. Heck, it gets walked over its entire life. And according to Jason Cruz, we should be paying a lot more attention to the stuff under our feet. Take another look at it, don't take it for granted. Cruz is a professor of all things grass at the University of Florida. Why study grass? It's a hundred million dollar crop in this state, impacting 90,000 jobs. There's something about walking around barefoot in a, a manicured lawn and just enjoying you know, the birds and the trees and, and everything going on around you and kind of letting the rest of the world uh, fade away for a little bit. Admittedly, I am guilty too of not giving grass its due. I needed more convincing. So on a Saturday afternoon when 90,000 people are watching the players on the field, you're not. No, no. Professor Cruz wanted to convince me more of the importance of grass by bringing me here to this place known as the Swamp. It's where the Florida Gators football team beats up on their opponents every fall. While the offensive line might inflict pain, the professor says the playing surface is critical to preventing injury. There's a lot of concern or increased concern with things like concussions. And if the surface is too hard, that's going to translate more energy back to the athlete's head and potentially end up in concussions. So how do you keep this at the optimum uh, softness? You don't want it to be too soft because people would twist an ankle. Absolutely, if it's too soft, it's an issue, but if it's too hard, it's an issue. And, and what we really try to do is we track it through uh, measuring the surface firmness on a regular basis and then coupling that with cultural management practices like core verification and other things that are gonna soften that surface up a little bit. The researchers here actually test the hardness of the grass with special instruments. The university switched to artificial turf a few years back, but ended up switching back to natural grass turf. The drawback often with synthetic fields, uh, it, it, there's a temperature issue that we're still trying to sort out. They get very, hard, very hot. The surfaces have reached temperatures of 170 to 200 degrees. Going the natural route is good news for Keith True now. His turf grass farm is located just down the road from the university. Well, we're rolling up some celebration Bermuda grass for a, a sports field in Orlando, and it's a football field. And it's a, a really good grass. It's very aggressive growing grass. It does well for traffic and wear. The turf grass industry really took off during the housing boom. When the market collapsed, especially here in Florida, farmers like True Now were hit hard. When the housing environment stopped, people didn't need grass, so it, the supply and demand was way off kilter. True Now says he sees the demand picking up slightly, but what about water conservation? Grass needs water to grow, and with people looking to cut their water use, how does grass fit into that picture? We've gotten so automated in life that we have a time clock and we set it for the days we're allowed to water and we set it and forget it. So a lot of times we need to be more proactive in, in when we have an, a good rainfall event to make adjustments. We're put under increasing pressure to do more with less with relation to their irrigation. And that's where some of our research is coming in that we're trying to help the water management districts gain a better understanding of the the technology that's out there. We have things like soil moisture sensors that can be included or incorporated into an irrigation system that would allow the irrigation system to irrigate the plant community when it needs it. Researchers are also working on new grasses that need less water and fertilizer. At the university's research farm, you'll find test plots where different varieties are tested. One may have better shade tolerance, one may have better disease tolerance, and if shade is your major problem, then you want that specific grass. If you live in an area where insects or diseases are the primary problems, then you want a grass that 
potentially tolerates those pest problems. Still want to disrespect this agricultural commodity? Well, think about this. Grass filters water that comes off of your driveway and removes pollutants from water in the soil. And turf grass systems have a great cooling effect in our environment. The area of turf that's roughly the size of a football field has the cooling effect of a 70-ton air conditioner. So Kevin, it's not very many research facilities that have their own uh, putting course. No, there's not. But it's a fitting addition to a farm focused on grass research. After all, many graduates here will end up maintaining landscapes at golf courses. Turf grass management would be the goal of the students coming out of the uh, turf grass science program at the University of Florida. Nice shot. Well, thank you. Which is good considering the golf course is the place where grass truly has class. Hey!